assalamu alaikum students so today's topic is potassium homeostasis uh, obviously with the focus is kidney so we will be discussing a lot about how the nephron handles uh, potassium and then later on we'll talk about how the whole thing is regulated okay right so we know that it is one of the most abundant cations in the body it is uh, concentrated inside the cell uh, so most of the potassium that you that we know is inside the intracellular compartment and uh, very less as compared to very less which is present in the ecf okay so of the total of that potassium we have in the ecf we have 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter uh, as i said 98% uh, potassium is within the cells um, these are important definitions and important values to remember hypokalemia is decreased ecf potassium uh, and hyperkalemia is increased ecf potassium okay the values are clear less than 35 milliequivalents per liter is hypokalemia and more than 5 milliequivalents per liter is hyperkalemia something to note here as you can see this is a very tight range uh, it's literally in fractions 3.5 to 5 is the whole game here and uh, a lot of mechanisms basically go into maintaining this very tight range of pota ecf potassium and for good reason and by now uh, i hope you remember the importance of potassium not only in nerve action potential but primarily uh, cardiac action potentials so it's crucial that potassium remains within a tight range uh, uh, because the heart and its conduction system uh, the whole thing the whole working depends on a stable ecf potassium uh, so the main regulator uh, basically of all this is kidney that's why we're discussing this uh, there can be wide uh, fluctuations in dietary potassium uh, so there are diets which are high in potassium then there are diets which are devoid of potassium uh, you can have uh, uh, whatever you like of course within uh, within a within a normal range uh, so a normal person can have uh, a, a diet maybe high in potassium and uh, the cells and the ecf potassium will eventually remain constant because of uh, a high degree of regulation uh, uh, at the cellular level so all the cells regulate their potassium and also then the, the master gland the, the kidney uh, takes care of whatever leftover uh, disturbance there is left uh, in potassium so uh, whatever the diet uh, is eventually it gets taken care of uh, within of, not, of course within a certain range by by the cells themselves we call it internal regulation and external is uh, by the kidneys uh, which controls so many other things uh, so today we'll see how kidneys regulate potassium okay so now we'll look at external balance which basically means the way kidney handles the nephron handles uh, potassium uh, this is a busy slide again i would advise you to keep a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper handy you may want to take down certain points uh, so that the whole topic gets prepared in one go okay so there are three sections of this slide one is uh, the overall potassium handling by the nephron some important bits here okay the second uh, part of this uh, diagram is where we'll go through this section of the dct so a, a, a blown up picture of the alpha integrated cell which uh, uh, i mentioned in the previous slides the uh, previous uh, lectures principal cell which i have explained in detail when discussing sodium uh, homeostasis and then we'll talk about uh, the overarching regulation of potassium excretion which has all sorts of factors in it so uh, saddle up we start from the left uh, we look at the nephron as a whole and you see the pattern here where i where we discuss uh, overall uh, ch chunks of potassium being handled very similar to what we saw in sodium uh, handling by the nephron but here the the, the percentages are a bit different this is, is the same 67 percent potassium uh, is reabsorbed at the pct however unlike 25 percent uh, uh, that gets uh, reabsorbed uh, sodium that gets re reabsorbed at the uh, thick ascending limb of loop of Henle, uh, 20 percent of potassium gets taken up from here now this is where again uh, sodium got interesting because this is where aldosterone does all sorts of things <clears throat> when 
active in when uh, sodium reabsorption where we were talking about here we see that uh, when we talk about potassium uh, uh, the diet becomes important and then you have variable secretion so reabsorption will take place uh, if there is uh, if the diet is deficient in potassium secretion means that you are uh, in your system there is more uh, potassium than required so it's going above five milliequivalents per liter uh, uh, statistic so you will have variable secretion okay and this uh, secretion will depend on uh, these six uh, five five uh, factors which is one is again diet the other is aldosterone third is acid base then flow rate and then luminal anions so having uh, uh, looked at the overall picture of what happens uh, in potassium uh, handling, and you can also see that excretion, uh, if the person is deficient in potassium, uh, he will only uh, secrete about 1% of the total uh, tubular load of potassium. However, if there is more potassium in the system, this can go up to 110% of secretion of potassium. And look at this value. And, and correlated with the plasma value of potassium of 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter. And you will see how serious kidney, serious a function kidney plays in the excretion of potassium and how this is the main factor which uh, holds the tight fort of plasma potassium. Okay. Now, then let's look at the tech. What is the technology which is behind all of this tight regulation of potassium? Uh, we see that uh, you have the alpha integrated cell. This is uh, again alpha integrated cell, and principal cells are two recurring cells uh, clusters which uh, happen to be uh, along the DCT and a bit uh, in the early collecting duct, if, if memory serves me right, but mainly the DCT. Okay, and uh, if I may label this cell as a as a potassium uh, reabsorber, so you can see potassium coming here as part of the same hydrogen potassium antiport mechanism that we discussed in the internal balance. It moves potassium from the lumen inside the cell and then potassium is trans transported across the ba uh, basolateral border and into the blood. Okay, so this is a clear cut reabsorber of potassium. However, the principal cell, as you can clearly see, is a potassium secretor. It's a potassium secretor. So reabsorption of potassium and secretion of potassium. You will say, hey, what's going on here? Uh, these cells uh, 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 seem to be contradicting each other. Well, it's not. the word is not contradiction. The word is balance. So check this out. If you have deficient potassium diet, if you are on a low potassium diet, then you will have potassium uh, reabsorbers the alpha integrated cell doing most of the business okay because that's what you need your diet is low in potassium you cannot afford to excrete any more potassium than you have to excrete okay so you will reabsorb most of the potassium that comes the way of the dct however and then this secretion will be it will be snubbed in this scenario however if you are high on a high uh, potassium diet then what 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 would you know what would you uh, be doing? You'll decrease this the working of this cell and increase the secretion by the principal cell to get rid of the uh, extra potassium. So you have you now understand what is the overall function of an alpha integrated cell and the overall function of the principal cell. One is reabsorber, one is secretor. Now let's come to the bits here. Let's come to these things now. First, we'll, we'll, we'll look at uh, the diet. We have mentioned the diet, but let's see if we have missed on something. Before I go into this whole thing of what the DCT does with, uh, with potassium, whether it's alpha integrated cell or principal cell, I want to just uh, clarify one basic uh, golden criteria in potassium handling of the DCT. Always remember that it's all about the potassium gradient within the cell. And when we are talking about basically the principal cell, which is the secretor, because look, we're talking about secretion now, basically. So we are talking about primarily the secretor, the principal cell, okay? 
uh, which comes into play when you have more than what you can handle in terms of potassium. So it's all about the gradient. What is the gradient? The gradient is, is established by the ATPAs at the basolateral border, which keeps on pumping, pumping potassium inside and sodium outside. So it keeps on concentrating potassium here so that it can be promoted. The secretion can be promoted. Now, whoever and whatever compound or whatever phenomena going on in blood or wherever will stimulate this ATPAs, will add to the concentration of potassium inside the cell. And this gradient will be enhanced. It's, remember, it's all about the gradient. When this gradient will be enhanced, naturally the secretion will be promoted. So with that in mind, uh, let's look at uh, uh, these factors. So one is diet. Basically diet, again, it basically enhances the gradient across the DCT cells. And uh, remember insulin that we talked about? So insulin also uh, works on these cells. It enhances the so, uh, ATPAs. It uh, uh, pushes in more potassium uh, and hence it gets uh, secreted from the luminal border. Okay. So this, this action uh, is an interesting point. An add-on would be the effect of insulin, which we we've, we've discussed in the internal balance. <clears throat> Number two is aldosterone. Now, remember aldosterone is a, is a busy hormone. Aldosterone gets secreted by angiotensin 2. We know when angiotensin 2 is made, the whole renin pathway. So keeping that in mind, let's, let's, let's just pick up proceedings from uh, uh, aldosterone onwards. Aldosterone basically, what does it do? Aldosterone reabsorbs sodium and along with it, it reabsorbs water. This is what we have done up till now. Okay, because we've been discussing uh, volumes and osmolarity and this, that, the other. But we've studied that. Now we've moved on. Now you see that this sodium uh, uptake by this principal cell, it's a positive charge, right? Sodium is a positive charge. So is potassium. Now, now imagine this. If you pull in by a hormone called aldosterone, you're pulling in more sodium, okay? Which wouldn't have been the case if aldosterone wasn't there. But now that aldosterone is there, aldosterone will, if, and if you have been doing your reading, will insert, make, first uh, induce the formation of and increase the insertion of ENAC channels, uh, epithelial sodium channels, ENAC, E, N, A for sodium, C for channel, ENAC channels along the uh, luminal border of the principal cell, thereby increasing sodium uh, uh, reabsorption by this cell. If sodium gets more over here, okay? Now this sodium will repel the potassium. When it repels the potassium, that will A2, in addition to the gradient you have already established for potassium, this sodium pushing in extra will elect electrically repel the potassium and aid its exit along with the gradient which we already talked about. So incoming sodium is actually linked with outgoing potassium. Said in another way, sodium gets reabsorbed by aldosterone and aldosterone also causes potassium secretion. This is new knowledge, you might want to log that away. Sodium reabsorption, potassium secretion done by aldosterone. Now, uh, you, you can have all sorts of uh, scenarios which we will uh, discuss and maybe some will come in your assessment based on this effect of aldosterone. Now, Aldosterone, uh, 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 besides uh, inserting ENAC channels and av making available uh, channels, these channels for sodium entry, also tends to stimulate ATPase. So it maximizes the effect of uh, potassium secretion as well as sodium exit along the basolateral border. So number one is ENAC channel insertion. Number two is stimulation of ATPase. Uh, it also, by the way, a third uh, lesser mentioned uh, effect of aldosterone is it also increases the number of potassium channels along the uh, luminal border. So not just ENAC sodium channels, stimulation of ATPAs, but also increased in the number of potassium channels through which potassium can be secreted. Um, then we, we come on to, uh, we'll come on to acid base at, at, the, at the last, uh, we'll just uh, sort out flow rate. So flow rate is basically increased velocity of fluid through this system. 
So imagine that there is a, it is a normal flow rate through which the fluid flows through the nephron and then there is an enhanced or increased flow rate due to whatever ECF changes, higher volume uh, or high sodium presence in the CVS will cause more enhanced GFR, increased tubular load of fluid and then increased velocity eventually of this fluid passing through the DCT. Now, if you have an increased rate, now imagine this cell right here, okay, with its uh, inherent basic gradient for potassium ready, secreting it already, and it's happy right now with a normal flow rate. Now you enhance the flow rate, you increase the flow rate. What, with, what are you doing? You are displacing fluid from here more quickly than uh, the cell would like. So the gradient, imagine the gradient would it, uh, across this, this uh, luminal border, would it be enhanced or would it decrease? You have increased fluid velocity. So fluid is being cleared of this area, i.e. in front of this audience of potassium waiting to be secreted. It's get, getting uh, cleared off quickly, more quickly than it usually does. It will enhance potassium secretion because whatever potassium secretion that occurs for example now potassium is being held up here at normal velocity at higher velocity it will be cleared very quickly so there needs to be more potassium and then more potassium and then more potassium so flow rate enhances but increased flow rate enhances uh, potassium secretion by uh, by aiding uh, this gradient uh, uh, i.e clearing the potassium uh, uh, off from the lumen quickly which then uh, forces the gradient to enhance itself and release more potassium. This is how flow rate affects potassium. And finally, you have the acid-base balance and acid-base balance. Let's look at this, uh, uh, the apical, the luminal border. Okay, you have this importer right here. I did not notice it before. Okay, now when you have acidosis, you have acidosis in the blood, right? The ECF is represented by the blood and the interstitium of the cell. This side is the urine side this side is the blood side so when we say that the body has gone into say acidosis we are basically saying that this blood and its uh, next door neighbor the interstitium of this cell have become acidotic i.e they, they are uh, they are more in hydrogen so what happens more hydrogen will be secreted inside the cell yes more hydrogen here it gets uh, secreted into the or, or uh, put inside the cell it gets secreted out because it needs to, it's acidosis. But then what happens to potassium? Potassium then, then gets reabsorbed, doesn't it? Because for, for electron neutrality reasons already explained. So resulted in, this will result in, as I mentioned before, hyperkalemia. So hydrogen will move this way, potassium will move this way, and it will cause hyperkalemia, retention of extra potassium, uh, uh, where the original problem was with acid it wasn't potassium's fault the original issue was with increased hydrogen but potassium had to come in because of the electron neutrality clause and that's that um, uh, hype and you can work out what happens in alkalosis it's the opposite